we're taking you back. All the way back to the third grade. Didn't you love third grade? Dodgeball, Charlotte's Web, integers? In this video, we'll review integers, consecutive integers, and properties of zero. This may all seem simple, but having a firm grip on your foundational math will help you out on the tougher problems. Integers are positive and negative numbers, including zero, which aren't fractions or decimals. Let's look at an SAT problem that uses integers. If n minus 1 over 5 is a positive integer, what is the smallest possible integer value of n? The answer choices are a4, b5, c6, and d7. As always, we want to start by underlining the facts, n minus 1 over 5 is a positive integer, then circling the key terms, smallest, possible, integer, and n. Finally, we want to label our answer choices as the value of n. Did you notice that all of the answer choices are numbers? Let's back solve, since the problem is asking for the smallest possible value. We'll start with a, which is 4, our smallest answer choice. Our fraction becomes 4 minus 1 over 5, or 3 over 5, which isn't an integer, since it's a fraction. So, we can cross out a. If we try b, or n equals 5, our fraction becomes 5 minus 1 over 5, or 4 over 5, which is also not an integer. Let's cross out b. Let's try c. n equals 6. Our fraction from the question becomes 6 minus 1 over 5. Doing this subtraction, our fraction becomes 5 over 5, which equals 1, an integer. Looking at our answer choices, C is correct. Knowing what an integer is and using the back-solving strategy made our difficult-looking problem fairly quick and easy to solve. Before we jump into another problem, let's review consecutive integers. Consecutive integers are integers that follow each other in order. For example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Consecutive even integers would be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and so forth. Consecutive odd integers would be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and so on. Now let's look at an SAT problem that uses consecutive integers. If the sum of two consecutive odd integers is divided by two, what is the value of the remainder? Our answer choices are all integers. We'll start by underlining the facts and circling the key terms. Finally, let's label our answer choices remainder. Now let's solve our problem by using the picking number strategy and pick two consecutive odd integers. Let's keep it simple and pick three and five. Since we need the sum of our integers, we'll add three to five, which gives us eight. Now we'll simply divide eight by two, which equals four. Since the division came out evenly, we have a remainder of zero. So the correct answer is A. Let's switch gears and focus on the properties of zero. Zero has some unique properties. It is an integer, it is an even number, and it's neither positive nor negative. So it's included as a non-positive integer as well as a non-negative integer. So you wouldn't list zero when asked for positive integers or negative integers, but you would include zero when asked for non-negative or non-positive integers. Okay, now that we reviewed integers, consecutive integers, and the properties of zero, let's look at one more SAT problem before we end the lesson. How many positive integers are in the solution set of 3x is less than 11 over 2 and negative 2 is less than x plus 1, which is less than 4? Our answer choices are A, none, B, 1, C, 2, and D, 3. As always, we'll start by underlining the important facts. 3x is less than 11 over 2, and negative 2 is less than x plus 1, which is less than 4. Then we want to circle the key terms. How many? Positive integers and solution set. Finally, we want to label the answer choices as the number of positive integers. We're ready to work toward the solution. Let's start by breaking down the wording. We have the phrase positive integers, so we know we're going to use integers greater than 0. We also have solution set which means all possibilities that work for x in both expressions. Let's start with the first inequality. To simplify, we want to convert 11 over 2 into a decimal. You can do a little long division if you need to, or if it's on the calculator portion of the test, you can use your calculator. Either way, we get 5.5. So we have 3x is less than 5.5. 
Instead of solving our inequality directly, we can pick numbers to see which positive integers work in our inequality. Let's start checking with a positive integer. Plugging 1 into the equation, we get 3 times 1, or 3 is less than 5.5. 1 worked well, and we know we can't use a higher number since 3 times 2, the next integer, would give us 6. And that's greater than 5.5. So, 1 is the only number that will work in the first expression, which means we just need to check that it works in the second inequality. Plugging 1 into x for the equation, we get negative 2 is less than 1 plus 1, which is less than 4. Or negative 2 is less than 2, which is less than 4. This is a true statement. The only value for x that works in both expressions is 1. The question asks us, how many positive integers are in the solution sets? Our answer should be 1, because there is only one positive integer that worked in both solution sets. Answer choice B, which is 1, is the correct answer. Not too bad, right? Remember, the trick to solving integer problems is to know exactly what you're being asked for and then substitute. Foundational math can be tricky, so get practicing. Make sure you explore the practice questions so you'll be ready come test day.